You talked about the, the forces of evil that, that are, have, have been out there. Um, who are these forces of evil? Oh, they're, they're just people who are wanting, you know, taxpayer money. That, uh, uh, they're special interest people that, that, uh, that I probably was, a, or I was being facetious to say forces of evil, really. I don't think they're evil people, but they're, they're people who I happen to disagree with on whether or not they deserve to get the uh, taxpayer money to the extent that they are. Um, you and, and I'm talking about the people that have come out here to lobby the legislature, and I think many of them with, you know, we work all this time studying this stuff and that and, and developing ideas and criteria and that, and then some lobbyist walks into a legislator and says, hey, if you vote for Dank's deal, you're going to hurt business. Oh, no, we don't want to hurt business. So, you know, that's, that's how the system works. It's unfortunate, but it's true. I think, um, I think it was yesterday Representative Blackwell said something to the effect of, if you're for wind power, then you're against transferability. Yeah, exactly. And that's because, to me, the wind power people and others that, that are moving into the state are, are wanting something for nothing. And I, you know, I don't think that's true. I don't think, you know, we, we're going to have windmills or wind turbines and wind power. Why? Because it's conducive to, to, to be able to develop that in Oklahoma. I mean, western Oklahoma, the wind patterns are, are perfect for that. They build the turbines, the wind turbines in Arkansas. I mean, they have three plants over there that employ a couple of thousand people to build the turbines and bring them over here to Oklahoma. They don't even generate wind in Arkansas because it's not conducive. Um, obviously, the, the bill died here in committee. This one did. There's another one that's already on the House floor. I think there will be another one that will come over from the Senate. I just want to keep the discussion going. I want, uh, I want the Oklahoma Watchdog and the daily newspapers to, to sit in and understand at least our side, what we're talking about. Because the others being done, you know, up and down the halls and out in front of the rotunda. Would this, um, you know, you, you mentioned wind power would be here no matter what. Could this uh, ending transferability hurt any industry in Oklahoma? Well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think if you can't use the credits, you lose them. I mean, you ought to have an obligation to the state for us to be giving you something. You know, I mean, it's kind of like the, you know, uh, it's kind of like you say, well, I don't, you know, I'm not contributing anything to the state, but I want the state to contribute something to me. If that makes sense, then I'm in the wrong business. Um, you talked about uh, the, the possibility of, you know, if you give a company $40 million in tax credits and they sell $0.80 cents to the dollar, then you're giving them $3.2 million more than what they actually needed. And you mentioned, why not just set up a grant program? Right. Is that something that you would be amenable to, having well, some sort of... Well, sure there is. It's, it's like the closing fund. You know, it's how they got the wind turbine plants in Arkansas. The governor of Arkansas had a closing fund. He gave two companies $8 million each to set up manufacturing plants to manufacture the turbines. And another one, um, $5 million. So, you know, those were things that actually created jobs, 12,000 in two different plants and uh, several hundred in another one. I mean, 1,200 and several hundred in the smaller one. But those are real jobs. Those are people who buy homes. Those are people who pay income taxes. Uh, go out in western Oklahoma and show me jobs associated with the, the, ener the wind energy. Maybe a few maintenance people after it's all said and done. They say, well, look at the construction. Well, you know, you can look at construction for a Walmart store. You know, I mean, there's a lot of construction going on. Look at the construction that just took place down in Oklahoma City with the Devon building. You know, I mean, we're not, you know, uh, I mean, you know, the, the whole thing just is, is convoluted. It's like I said, we have become or have been in the past a constitutional created body of Santa Clauses. You know, we give away the taxpayers' money and delight in doing it. And we're influenced by the lobbyists, 
We're influenced by campaign contributions. We're influenced by people getting jobs after they're through in the legislature. And, you know, I mean, I just think that's wrong. Uh, if you have a crystal ball, will there be a transferability um, bill that passes and is signed by the governor this year? Uh, I, you need to get rid of transferability. Right. I, I, I don't know that we can get rid of it completely, but at least we've started a conversation by where we would put some very strict uh, rules associated with it. Would you be happy with, as a first step, as it was mentioned here, uh, make it so that it's only applicable to income tax so that insurance companies couldn't use it against their premium tax? That would be one good thing about it, yes. But see, it would, it would not do them any good uh, to do that, really. Uh, I mean, it would make selling them much more difficult for the people because they would have to go out and find individuals that, that you know, or, or companies that had large obligations that weren't getting them. And, you know, just 35% of the corporations in Oklahoma pay a corporate tax. That's another thing these wind farms don't pay because they get accelerated depreciation on their investments and all that, you know. So, so they're not paying any income taxes.